Hello and welcome to the program. Now, after four weeks of total closure in Lagos, Ogun, and the Federal Capital Territory, economic activities across Nigeria can now reopen following the gradual easing of COVID-19 lockdown uh, directive by the president. Despite the fact that the country has been seeing increasing numbers of COVID-19 infections, President Muhammad Buhari says for economic reasons, restrictions can be eased and business can resume. However, there will still be no uh, interstate travel. A coffee of 8 to 6, 8 p.m. now to 6 a.m. will be strictly enforced nationwide and there will be a compulsory use of face masks in public spaces. The question people are now asking is, is this the right time to ease the lockdown? All right, I'm now being joined on the program by Dr. Ugo Enebili, who is a public health physician. Doctor, thank you very much for joining us on the program. Uh, next week, of course, um, the government has decided to ease the lockdown, so we expect to see businesses resume uh, next week in Lagos, Abuja, and of course, Ogun State, and all over the country, as a matter of fact. So you, you think it was the right decision to ease the lockdown at a time when cases uh, would appear to be going up? Yes, thank you very much. Um, you know, the operational world is, uh, you know, it, everything is being done in the interest of uh, the citizens and for the country. At this point in time, uh, yes, the cases are going up on a daily basis even. And let's all, not also lose sight of the fact that more testing centers were also opened up. That being said, uh, the plan the easing of lockdown by the government, it, 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 it wouldn't just be that everybody goes to the streets without any pro protective or preventive measures at all. Uh, at the point where people have to go back to work, uh, if not already announced, at least it would be clearly made known to everyone going out. You should still observe the social distancing, we're still going to observe all the non pharmaceutical interventions, you know, the hand washing, social distancing, uh, use of face masks, so that, yes, people are going out, but we could also prevent uh, people from infecting each other as it were. Uh, if you look very well, really, uh, the economy of the country, uh, even before the lockdown, and when you consider what impact the lockdown would have had on it, and uh, when you look at it that, you know, eventually, you know, just like the president has said, it's going to be a phased uh, reopening, it's going to be a phased easing of the lockdown. Um, well, it, 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 it is in order, you know, when you look at it holistically, when you're not looking at only the diseases, Mm. I am also aware that someone could also argue that the countries that were locked up, some countries that were locked up and reopened, you know, maybe there was a surge in cases. Um, that's uh, also another argument. But then, you know, about lockdowns, I mean, about easing of lockdowns, you know, at the end of the day, you would observe that it's always and always in the interest of the citizens and right. the countries as it were so that things can still go on I, I, even as uh, the public health processes are still ongoing yeah i, I understand you now let, let's talk about you, you talked about face mask now let's let's talk about that it's very critical at this time the government has made it yeah. compulsory uh, Lagos state governor announced that uh, it's compulsory for instance to use uh, face mask uh, if you're going out to the public, yes. and almost all the governors of the countries uh, of the country now have made, made it compulsory, and uh, we've seen an explosion of uh, face mask production. Everyone appears to be producing face masks, so you have like a face mask economy, if you like. But in terms of quality, what 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 should we be looking out? What should people be looking out for now if they go to buy? Uh, face masks because we see people hawking them on the street. Well, you know, the thing about face masks is whatever type uh, anybody decides to wear, the hygiene is very important. If not, someone is directly just importing what is in the hand of the person handing over to him at that point in time uh, directly onto his nose and mouth. So, how it's uh, packaged and sold is very important. That's what you're trying to say. 
the hygiene of both buying it and cooking it on is very important, else it, it defeats the entire purpose of the face mask. For instance, I was already saying before that no matter the type of face mask someone is using, whether N95 respirator, whether the surgical mask, whether even the cloth mask, it is very important that it's coming from a hygienic source. The manufacturing process should be hygienic. The point of sale pro, uh, contacts that the person makes to buy it, to acquire it, should be very hygienic. In fact, that hygiene should be unbroken, even up to the point where the person is putting it on. If not, the person is actually just wearing on the bacteria, virus, and every other person that every other thing that has uh, touched on it along the way. Uh, that said, I think where the focus should be now is to have a way of regulating these uh, productions, even as uh, many people already still argue about the effectiveness of the cotton uh, cloth mask as it is. Uh, but beyond that, in order not to cause more harm than good. It is very important that, you know, just like we have NAVDAC regulating the drugs uh, very effectively at some point, it's also very important to have a very strong regulatory body that regulates where these things come from. We'll have some uh, maybe standard uh, organization of Nigeria mask on it. Something that tells us that uh, beyond the, the production process, you know, it's probably was sterilized before it came out and that it has maintained that level of uh, non-contamination up to the point where somebody is purchasing it. And, you know, particularly this thing about maybe when people are purchasing it, they put their hand, dip their hand into wherever container it's coming from. Mm. That's totally to be discouraged. You see, because if the thing had followed all these processes and gotten to the point and that person is now putting his hand inside that packet, to collect it, it could as well be infecting the other masks inside the pack where it's coming from. So it's so, so really it, very it, urgent that we we'll put out these messages. Mm. Before, the message is no about coronavirus. Mm. Now it is about, please let us make sure that we don't cause more harm than good by you know, putting these things directly to our faces when we are not so sure of it. So, both the people that hawk it, both the people that manufacture it, there just has to be a way where the the communication now changes now to you know emphasizing on those people and focusing on them so that we don't have a rebound effect. Wearing of mask is good, but when uh, somebody is wearing an infected mask, that's a very dangerous uh, thing. And and since um, this mask are so, washable, uh, is it? Could we say it's advisable that, look, if you bought that mask, that before you wear it, probably go wash it, just to be on the safe side. Go wash it before you wear it. Could we say that? Yes. That, uh, we shouldn't actually just buy it off and wear, actually. We should wash it, uh, you know, disinfect it in hot water. You know, because we already know about this thing, about the virus and uh, very hot temperature, you know. Put it under the sun, wash it under very hot water, you know. Try also to disinfect it yourself because, you see, all these processes we're talking about, and this is something that already has to happen by ne next week. Uh, it may not, we may not uh, expect maybe the best out of it. So it's very important that you already have the one you're wearing, you buy the ones you're buying and wash them properly disinfect it yourself before you also put it on. And when you are finished wearing it, you remove it properly. You know, there's this thing about if you have worn it through the day and maybe droplets. You know, for instance, so someone wears it and the person has gone out mm. and the people have coughed and all that and those things have touched the outer surface of the mask. You know that if someone is not also careful in removing the mask, the person could also touch up those things and as well infect himself. That thing that has not gotten inside the mask, remaining outside of the mask, the person could now touch it directly and uh, get infected from it. So I think our message is now, you know, it has to go beyond, you know, there's a coronavirus, it does like this and it does like that. It should go also beyond that to also be sure that the things we are implementing now for easing of the lockdown, that they go uh, as they should as they should go, actually. And um, it's, uh, you know, just like I said, uh, it, it's, it's 
for everybody to check out the, the, the masks you are buying, buying to even be sure that uh, minus the integrity, the quality of the fabric, that it will the person, the person would have some protection at all. For instance, we've said it before that a good mask, as you're buying, as you're picking it up to wear, hmm. you should look at it to make sure that it's not torn because you know that in the manufacturing process it could easily get torn or have holes. Even in the washing too, depending on maybe how harshly it is washed or depending on the material too, it could have holes. So if somebody is wearing a mask with holes, you know, it defeats the entire purpose of the mask. We should always uh, inspect the mask first of all to make sure that just like a good mask, it should have no tears or holes. We should make sure that it, you know it has a fitting over the nose. You know, like I was saying before, if it doesn't fit well, things could still come in from the side, and um, the virus could actually infect the person while still wearing the mask. And most times, when you look at uh, people wearing the mask, you look uh, uh, many times it's under the nose, mm. or maybe yeah. it is that short that it only, only covers the nose and the mouth mm -hmm. alone. When it doesn't cover the chin, really, you know that uh, things could stay pass from there. And many times, too, you know, when you look at the ear, when you look from the side, you know, where the rope goes, you see some space, you know, between the face and uh, the mask you know those spaces those are still places where yes as we're wearing the mask you know the virus could still go into there so whichever mask we are wearing even before we buy it we should make sure that it will be able to cover nose mouth chin it has that metal or it has some hook or something around the nose that will make it fit snugly around the nose it has something to hook it around the ear or behind the head. It um, should not have any holes or gaps. It should not have any sides, any gaps in the side mm. too. Effectively, the mask should not be loose. That loose to be protective. So right. these are things we look out for before buying. And these are things we look out for after washing and before mm. even reusing. And of course, it goes without saying, it, we, we shouldn't wear the mask today and bring it out tomorrow and dust again and wear and wear and wear. <laughs> we know we should have enough quantity to be able to uh, wash, hang as it's uh, getting ready for where we still already have another one to go out. Hmm. All right, Dr. Nebli, thank you very much for your time. Uh, unfortunately, we just have to end it there. Thank you very much, You're Dr. Nebli. Dr. Onebili there, a public health physician. We'll take a short break and uh, we'll be right back. On Deji360, we don't just ask the questions. What is wrong with amending the constitution the way uh, the, the National Assembly members have been doing it? We seek answers. Constitution is constituent. Our problem is not um, lack of laws. Our problem is lack of the willpower to implement our laws. Answers that provide clarity. While we negotiate, we should try to make it a point that the girls must be complete. The clarity you need to make informed judgment so that you can make the right decision and take action. People are saying it is you politicians that are responsible for this, that you are the reason why oh, this is happening. All these dollars that call themselves governors in this country? I wish we had people like Tony at the National Assembly. God forbid that I go to join that uh, <laughs> family. Digital 360. Providing clarity to issues.